Morning, everyone. Irene, are you still traveling everywhere? Hi, Jessica. Hi, everyone. Uh, well, kind of. Since I'm still working from home, I decided uh -huh. that this is going to be and the best opportunity to travel around. So <laughs> I just carry my computer and work from everywhere. <laughs> That's what I do. I've been really jealous. I've just been following you like oh, <laughs> oh, Yeah, no, I've been traveling a lot this summer. <laughs> uh, how about you? How's it going? Well, I was just in Italy, actually. Oh, just really? Oh, yeah, yeah, for the G20. Oh, so cool. Well done. Where did you go to? I guess Rome. Uh, well, I've been before, but my mom went with me for her retirement trip. So we went to Rome. And wow. 20 was in Bologna. Then we um, uh -huh. did Venice and Florence, all the hot oh, Amazing. Amazing. I hope you, you had a good time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And in summer, it's beautiful. Especially. There's no tourists right now. It's crazy. Oh, really? Oh yeah, I went to Rome a few months ago and there were very few. Uh, it's because of the COVID situation, you know. Yeah. yeah. Normally but, you know, having been there before and it just you know, I think they said they were only like at 10% uh -huh. what they usually are. <laughs> Interesting. Well, I'm glad you had a good time by the way, <laughs> despite yeah, the, the summer. I think it was extremely hot, at least if you if you were there in, in August? Yeah. Well, no, I came just in September and it was still really warm. Oh, cool. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's great. Wow. Well done. Hi, Berlin. How are you doing? <laughs> Good morning, sisters. Can you hear me? How are you? Good. How are you? Hi, Berlin. Good. Hi, Iren. How are you? I'm fine. Fine. Good. Nice to hear your voice again. I know it's so good to hear and to see you all. <laughs> Amazing. Hi everyone. Hello, hello. hello. All right. We'll go ahead and kick it off. Augustina has a very professional <laughs> She's in the clouds. She's in the clouds. <laughs> um, so yeah, so thank you all. Uh, it's been a while. Um, but really glad that you're joining in with us this morning slash afternoon, wherever you may be coming from. I'm really excited because we are showcasing our in-house talent, um, someone who is usually the behind the scenes person for Zahara's Dream, doing all the wonderful communications and design work. So this morning um, we've asked uh, her to give her brilliant expertise on things that she's learned um, as she's been navigating all of this uh, fun, not only our like normal online space, but COVID space, everything in between. So just to give a little bit of background about Ms. Augustina, she recently graduated with a master's degree in international policy and development from the Middlebury Institute of International Studies. And she holds a bachelor's degree in international affairs um, and Italian from the University of Colorado Boulder. She's completed a virtual internship with the UN Population Fund. From this position, she independently researched and created an internal strategy document on Gulf states funding trends. She spent much of her youth in Italy and Ghana. And here we are speaking about Italy. <laughs> I just <laughs> ask you, Augustina. Um, she speaks Kwai and Italian fluently. And she's also the North American volunteer, as mentioned, for Zahara's Dream and works on the communication engagement for the organization. She's passionate about young women's leadership and empowerment and her free time. She enjoys reading and listening to Afro beats. So with that, I turn it over to you. Thank you very much, Jess, for the introduction. Thank you. And good morning, good afternoon, everyone. And thank you for coming. Jess, if you can please uh, bring up the presentation.
Okay, thank you very much, Jess. Okay, so as Jess mentioned earlier, my name is Agostina Into, and I want today to feel like, I don't want it to feel more like a lecture. So I'm going to talk briefly for like 15 minutes, but I will also appreciate your input and also your personal experiences of how you've been able to navigate social media during this COVID times. Unfortunately, we're still in it. But I will briefly give an introduction of what I do at Zahara's Dream and some of the lessons that I've learned by handling the communications material for the organization. So Jesse, if we can please get started and you can go to the next slide. Thank you. So I started Zahara's Dream in January 2021 of this year, mm -hmm. but previously, I think I applied in December and I first heard about Zara's dream through Verlaine actually and also through my teacher at that time Mrs. Marie Butcher and I heard Verlaine Verlaine came to well she didn't actually come but ver it was via a virtual program she came to Middlebury and was speaking and I became very passionate about just hearing her talk and how I loved what she was doing with the organization and also her journey and I became very interested and I wanted to learn more about the organization and what they were doing. So I also did a bit of background research, research on Zahara's dream. So towards the end of December, Mary Butcher sent me the application and I applied and I got in and I started in, the, in January, 2021. So I started as the North American volunteer and honestly to Verlaine and Jess, thank you for bearing with me because <laughs> God knows, I mean, I do social media stuff, but I am not a pro. So I've had to learn and navigate my way um, through everything. And Jesse, if you can go to the next slide, please. Thank you. So ever since I started, we have been pretty remote and it's all been virtual events, but some of the amazing virtual events that I've, that I've had the opportunity to be part of, my first one was the New Year, New You. And the second one was the feminist leadership movement. But one thing I would like to say is that as I was part of these events and as more tasks and tasks build up that I had to handle the communication side of the organization, I was learning from the people that were, that were already doing the job. That will be Whitney, Inez, Jess herself, and also uh, some part of it from Verlaine. And as time went on, I started like picking small things up and also creating my own space within the organization. And I started uh, creating the daily affirmations and also creating the posters that will be going out when we had like virtual events. Jesse, we can go on to the next slide. Thank you. And one thing I would like to say is that as time went on, I think I started getting a clearer picture. I know that social media is powerful. We all know that social media is very is a very powerful tool. But one thing I would like to ask each and every one of the participants in here is like, how do you think, I mean, social media can be used for good. It can also be used for bad, but how are you using your social media network to promote, let's say your organization or the kind of, information that you put out there what kind of impact do you want it to do you want it to have on your followers and one thing i will say that i have learned with zahara's dream is that we are an organization that stands for for young women's leadership making sure that young women take up their places in society but are also able to speak up and showcase their talent so for me um when i'm working on any communication material that you know, if we're doing something about feminist leadership movement, or if we're doing something that has to do with, you know, like a promotional flyer, or if we're partnering, partnering with any organization, the first thing that comes to mind is what is my goal and what is the target, the audience, especially, and what is it that we as an organization are trying to achieve? So one of my go-to first before I do anything is Canva. If I'm working on any flyer or anything, any design skills, anything you guys see that goes out on Zahara's Dream social media pages, it's always, it starts from Canva and it then works its way into Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and then 
our YouTube page. We have much more engagement on Twitter and also via LinkedIn, but I will say we are very, very much active on Twitter. Um, Jesse, if you can go on to the next slide. Thank you. And I put pictures of some of the flyers that I've had to uh, create. Thank you, Irene. I love Canva too. And also, please, as I go on, please engage in the uh, chat box. I would love to hear your opinion and stuff. And these are some of the pictures of the flyers that I've had to create. And I will tell you, this is, I will say, a work in progress. Because as I was doing this presentation, I looked back at some of my original uh, flyer designs that I made. And I, even I was horrified. I was like, wow, I have learned a lot. So I will definitely say thank you to Verlaine and Jess for bearing with me and also for allowing me to be able to grow. Jesse, we can, we can go on to the next slide. And I'm asking you guys also, do you have a plan? And I have had to ask myself this question. Each time I'm creating a flyer or maybe I'm about to create a post that will go out via the Zahara social media page, I always start out by organizing my post. And I, the tools that I use are either Google Calendar. Uh, I've also had to use ClickUp, but I, I've used ClickUp. It's a project management tool. I've used it mainly for school, but the using like a traditional notebook, which I love, I still do. I write all of my notes in here and stuff are my, let, I'll say the holy ground before I even touch the computer. But one thing I will tell each and every individual on here today is that if you have a plan, which is great. You always need to have a plan. It's like, how do I frame it? Start out by putting, let's say, organizing your post. Let's say you're creating, you have an event coming up and you create something via Canva. You have multiple flyers. Have a plan, let's say, on Monday, I will post this flyer, create your caption, but also use Google Calendar or Excel sheet or as I said, if you are the traditional type you write, like to write, use a notebook or use a project management tool to keep yourself on track, but also keep yourself accountable and have like a time frame because Zahara is being very much international and everybody is on different time zones. I'm sure even some of the people joining in today are from different time zones. So have a time zone where the time I like to post the most on Zahara's dream ends up like around 8 a.m., 9 a.m. in the morning, because I'm sure it's in the afternoon also somewhere else, but have a specific plan and a time frame of when you want your post to go out, when you think you will have the most engagement with your followers. Oh, and also Jess, can you go on to the next slide? Thank you. Okay, this is an example of um, a project management tool. The first one is uh, Google Calendar. And the second one is the ClickUp that I was talking about. And ClickUp also works very well. It's like Google Calendar, but on, I don't want to use the, well, on a different level, like to a higher degree. That one, if you can keep a whole bunch of files stored in, stored in there, and it will give you like reminders. If you missed, let's say, the daily task that you were supposed to do, it will remind you that, you know, you have skipped this task or you didn't do it. So project is a very, very great project management tool. And one thing I will also like to emphasize on is that after you have, let's say, selected the time you want your post to go out and stuff, before it even goes out, take time to look at your post or the flyer that you created and have an understanding. If you're working for yourself, great. You, you know your target audience, or maybe you know the kind of message you want your post to have. But if you're working with an organization, in my example, I work with Zahara's Dream, understand the organizations, the, the language that they use. At Zahara's Dream, when we post something, we say, hey, fabulous, which means it compasses everyone. And you're not just targeting a certain specific uh, population. So have, understand the organization's language and also understand your organization vision. What is it that you want to 
achieve what is it that you want to put out there. Oh, can we go on to the next slide, Jess? And also the power of hashtag. I'm sure everyone is familiar with what Zahara is bringing um, hashtag our BU powerfully. And also uh, we have when she rises, we all rise. Hashtags are very, very, very important. I cannot even stress enough on it, enough of it, especially when I create a post or when a flyer is going out and I'm putting in a certain hashtag, our go-to is the BU powerfully, but I also like to put the generation equality one, which is the UN, the United Nations one. And I use that because I wanted to pick up traffic. If somebody clicks on generation equality, I mean, if they click on it and they will definitely end up going to BU powerfully, which also has Zahara's dream and that puts your organization out there. So please, please, understand first of all your organization's vision the language what it is you want to put out there and specifically also for you whatever it is that you might be doing let's say you're creating a non-startup or you're creating a certain post about maybe your kind of work that you do have a specific hashtag that you might want to use and that you think will be able to achieve more clicks and have like be able to get more people involved and as we move on to the next slide, I would like each and everybody to think about maybe a hashtag. Thank you. Maybe a hashtag that you like. So right now, if everybody can either grab their phones or we can use the text box. Oh, sorry, I'm back. We can use the chat box here in the in Zoom. And each if I'll say, let's take like a minute for each and everyone to, you know, create their own unique hashtag and post. I would like to hear your stories, I will say. And we can go and, you know, we can take turns. So if Aine, Carlin, Irene, Jessica, Tia, and also Verlaine, if each one and everyone wants to start in about approximately one minute. Oh, but also when you're ready, please put it in the chat box. I would like to see. Oh, great. Verlaine says, hashtag hair power, tap into your inner power to build your dreams forward. <laughs> yes, I agree, Jess. Verlaine is too good at this. <laughs> great. Who else? Come on, guys, don't be shy. Phoenix fall 100 times right. Phoenix, hashtag Phoenix fall 100 times rise one of us. Thank you, Acha. Wow, thank you. That was powerful. Amazing. Okay, come on, sisters. We need one more or two. <laughs> Great, Jess. I need more coffee. Great. Great. I like she leads, hashtag she leads. 
Thank you, Irene. Great. I will definitely be posting these these hashtag hashtags after we're done. Let me see. Dreamers, some dreamers and doers. Oh yes. Oh, and sorry, everyone. I'm zooming from my phone, so I'm also taking screenshots of the. of the hashtag, I'm actually going to post them. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much, each and every one of you. I will be posting these hashtags after. Oh, great. You, thank you, Jess, you are enough. Thank you. Oh, uh, okay, let's continue. Jess, can we go on to the next slide? Thank you. And I put this, identify the type of environment you thrive in. I will say that I will not have been able to do what I do at Zahara's Dream in terms of handling the communication side if it wasn't a collaborative and also a learning and a judgment-free environment. So whether you're working by yourself or you're working also for an organization, first identify the kind of, let's say what your learning style is and which type of environment you thrive in, because that is very, very, very important. That will actually, I wouldn't say, I mean, that will determine whether you'll be able to be successful at what you do. And it is very, very, very important. I cannot stress, uh, stress enough on it. And as I've had to navigate my way even though we are remote and it's still via COVID and all that stuff, being able to work with other people, being able to work with other people, even though you're virtual and then having like a great plan, but also understanding my learning style and the kind of way that I work well with other people has been able to help me. So I didn't, I'm more of a like, I'll say like a collaborative person, I like to work with people, but also listen to them to be able to understand their vision. So that is very much important when you're starting something on social media, whether it's by yourself or you know, you're know you working for an organization. Just go on to the next slide, please. And one thing I will say, some of the lessons that I have learned along my journey these few months, I will say is that be passionate about what you do because if you don't have the passion the drive for it it will show via your social media post it will show via your the flyers that you create it will actually manifest its way in everything that you do so please 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 be passionate about what you do whatever it is that whether you're working for yourself or you're working for an organization and also have a plan to organize your post because when I started Zahara Stream, I was still in school and I also had school work, but I was very passionate about what I was doing. And I realized that I needed to have a plan and I needed a way to organize my post because I was like working on my school is based in California and I was running on California time, but I'm here in New York, I'm on Eastern time. And sometimes some posts, you know, I wake up here early in the morning and I, I'm like, okay, at this time, this post needs to go out. But I also had like an 8 a.m. class on California time. So I'm like, okay, at this, so, so I make, I made a plan that at this time, this post will go out. I will be working on only just Zahara's dream stuff. And then towards this time, I will work on school work. So please, please, please have a plan and stay organized because that will keep you sane. And also, one thing I've also learned is that be willing to observe and learn from your predecessors, because I'm definitely not a social media guru or I was not even like a communications person at all. I technically fell into this position and I've made it into my own and I've made it into something that has become part of me. So I've definitely learned from Berlin, from Whitney, Inez and all of my other team members at Zahara's Dream. And one thing I will also say is create your own niche. When I joined Zahara's Ring, they already had the, you know, the events going on, the Be Powerfully 
talks going on and stuff. But I also wanted to like have the day create like the daily affirmations, which I did um, for a while. And I will get started back on it as we're entering, as we're already in the fall, actually. But create your own space within your organization that you work with you work in and also let's say if you're by yourself create your own niche like your target audience find your way within something that you're doing to call your own but also share your light with other people and also the last one is be willing to receive constructive criticism and that is to say there are times I messed up big time but if there's nothing wrong with that we all make mistakes be willing to listen and also understand what is going on because we all learn from you know our mistakes and learning from the people that are around you that are already doing a good job of it. Just go on to the next slide, please. And almost lastly, I put a picture of this is our first event, a first in-person event. And I will also like to say thank you to Jess. I mean, I wish we all had like a group picture of all of the team members, but for listening to me and allowing me to be able to do what I do at Zahara's Dream. Oh, can you go on to the next slide, Jess? Thank you. And I put this quote there, which is when I found it, I'm like, yes, it says, if you have knowledge, let others light, uh, light their candles in it. And that is to say, as I mentioned earlier, when I first started, I wasn't good at Canva, I'm sure. <laughs> Uh, Berlin and Berlin definitely pick it up and Jess I'm sure she knew but Whitney and Inez have been of oh I can't I don't even know what to tell them they have been of such great great help especially both of them because they were the ones designing doing all of the flyers before I joined the organization by watching them work and also even though we're virtual listening to their input and them teaching me, oh, do this, do this on Canva has been great immense help to me. And I've been able to learn and grow from that experience. So one thing I would like to tell each and everyone that is here today that is joining is that if you're good at something, allow people to, you know, allow people to join and be part of you, be able to learn from you because you might not be, you might not know what that person's background is, or you might not know how that person, let's say, is able to do something unless you allow them close to you and pick up some of your skills. So please, please share your knowledge and let people, allow people to share their light with you. And one thing I will definitely say to everyone on here is to be patient, be kind, and let people be who they are within, if they're with you in an organization, allow them freedom to be able to, you know, showcase their talents and not, uh, how do I put it? Not cage them. Cause sometimes we find ourselves in an organization where we're not able to be who we are. And that is that goes on to the first point is in whatever it is that you embark on, whether it's social media or it's work and be passionate about you do, what you do and, share your gift and also let people share theirs with you and thank you very 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 much for today and i would like to also listen to each and every one of your personal experience and maybe what it is that you're doing on social media and maybe you know how we can learn from one another because i'm still learning and you can also ask me any any questions so please it's q a thank you very much Oh, thank you, Anna. Thank you, Verlaine. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Sorry, I was like trying to zoom in out of everything with the share. It's been a while, guys. Um, thank you, Augustina, so much for sharing your journey and your wisdom. Um, I mean, it's crazy to think about, you know, you're coming up to what, almost a year <laughs> now that you're with us. Um, and you've accomplished, you know, you've grown so much and it just, it just goes to show, um, you know, when, when people are given the space, um, and the encouragement to really thrive, just how far you can go, you know, the, the dream team, as we call it, um, and, and mm -hmm. 
another. Um, I can't wait to see five years, even five years from now, where people are in their lives. Yeah. In the show. Um, but I want to I want to open the floor uh, to other people to join in and ask questions yeah. or, you know, share wisdom of their own um, in, you know, things that they've learned when it comes to social media. Um, if anybody wants to jump in, just feel free. So hi, everyone. Hello. Uh, thank you, Ago, for the for the great like you've shared with us your story. Um, I'd like to ask a question, which you, um, um, I manage several social media pages for like local non-government organizations. Mm -hmm. um, I, I find it very difficult when it, when it comes to trying to find your audience, because I usually view social media as a point where you can, you can, mm -hmm. you can get, you can get the, the general audience, like, I feel like everyone should be my audience. So, <laughs> so like, how do I manage to like be very specific? Yes, I have the role. I know the role which I'm supposed to like the role of the organization. So uh -huh. how do I balance between that need to be everyone's audience and that need to really focus on what I have to do? Yeah, because like sometimes when I share something and I find few likes, or the same people liking the same things. I feel mm -hmm. like it's not enough. Like I need to do something else. Yeah. Okay. One thing I will say is definitely, uh, if you don't mind me asking, what type of organization do you work with? Uh, it's it's a health pro promotion organization. It's a local one started by students at my university, at the college I go to. Mm -hmm. So it's, I mean, it's still, it's still beginning. It's a beginner. So okay. I, I, yeah, yeah. One thing I will say is the first one is you cannot, not everyone can be your audience. And it's something that I've also definitely had to learn. One thing I will say is that at the beginning, sometimes when I will post some stuff, it wouldn't get, you know, that much engagement, particularly like, you know, on Facebook. But one thing I realized is that Twitter is our holy ground. So one thing I think you need to realize is that not everybody, not everyone can be your audience. So if you're one other thing that I will suggest is that partner with, let's say, another university that is doing the same thing as you guys are doing, or partner with an, another organization that is also maybe working on this, another local organization that is also working on something that you guys are doing, and join forces that way in terms of and also like use let's say use popular hashtag that maybe another health organization is doing and that you will be able to pick up traffic that way okay okay thank you mm -hmm. you're welcome also, and are there any courses which you you recommend courses courses do you do website management Oh no, I don't do website management. Okay. <laughs> I, <don't. laughs> I know I, I sound like a pro, but I don't do website management, but I can look into it for you. If I come across something, I will let you know. I have a friend that does social media marketing and all that stuff. So definitely leave your email in the chat box and I will get back to you on that one. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I'll also uh, just jump in and, and say something that you know, Verlaine also does really well. Um, and thinking about your audience, you know, mm -hmm. you have to think about your SMART goal. Of what, it, what is your advocacy goal? Mm -hmm. and from there, think about who your primary audience is by thinking, who are, who are the champions that are doing this work in this space? Who are your allies in this space? So, and thinking of, you know, it's really just create an Excel sheet. You know, write all these people's um, accounts down. So as you do post, you're tagging them and they get to know you and then they amplify your work. And it's really just a community of getting out the information that you need out. But also think about your opposition because as you get more popular, you're going to get tagged and, you know, nasty things are going to get said. So keeping in mind some type of um, messaging on standby to combat you know, that whatever it is, hate speech, misinformation. I mean, especially if you're working in women's health, <laughs> just yeah. keep 
just to keep that in mind. Um, but I think, you know, trying to be as engaging as you can with other people, whether it be individuals, um, organizations, um, and, and just writing and continuously tagging, and then it just grows your own network. Mm -hmm, definitely. Okay, yeah, that, that's real. And don't get discouraged. It takes a while. It takes time. We don't, we don't get to like almost 10,000 people like Merlene. <laughs> Merlene, I don't know if you want to come in and add your wisdom. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Tia. Hi, Tia. Hi, Tia. Perhaps I'll let Siva, I see Siva is online, huh, Siva? Okay. Hi, sisters. I Thank you so much. I have to say, my, my heart is so full because seeing, of course, and hearing Ago's uh, historical journey through Zara Stream and, and, of course, a sister, uh, Jess, you know, I don't know if uh, I'm sure everyone is familiar, but Jess uh, was also Agostina's uh, mentor and you know, working together through Zara's dream as she came on the North American team, you know. So I, I just want to say that, you know, teamwork always makes the dream work because I think in the end, it's just just one single person's dreams or anything like that. It really is a mosaic of coming together and saying, what is the vision that we want to put forward and what is the change we want to build together through this platform? And I think, and we've talked a lot about it, particularly with Jessica, how do we want to shift the power dynamics within our own generation? You know, because as young women uh, all connected here, we know the challenges that exist in the spaces in which we move, you know, uh, may they be um, age related, uh, gender related, or even race uh, related. And I put race with a, a grain of salt, uh, because I believe only in the human race. Unfortunately, human beings, we have a way to divide people into colors, into what we don't understand. Uh, but really looking at how we can actually build a better, more positive world together, you know, with a change being the mm -hmm. next person next to ourselves. Um, to come back on, on the social media, well, I have to say, Agu is a, is a boss. <laughs> so she, that's why she's leading us to be on the discussion on how to utilize social media uh, like a boss. But I, I do agree, it takes time with what Jess just said. It takes, of course, having a clear vision. And I think, Agu, you highlighted that so well, having a plan. Um, and yet, it takes time. Uh, even my, for instance, you, you referred to, to Twitter. Uh, I remember a few years ago, I think I had like 500 followers. <laughs> I was thinking, okay, just like Thea just mentioned, how do I reach to the people I want to share my message, my message with? You know, how do I amplify? How do I connect the dots? And I think as Jessica just mentioned, of course it takes time, but I go, you highlighted it so well, finding like-minded people and connecting with them, you know, actually being proactive and not just throwing what I call a message in the water, you know, in the ocean, hoping that someone finds it, but literally delivering your message to the people you wish to engage with, you know, and, and then I think it just grows this way. Uh, but just like anything in nature, before it grows, it takes nurturing, it takes a clear vision, and it takes a bit of time. But as just mentioned, it's, uh, you know, you continue. It's never impossible, just have to do it. Thank you. Thank you, V. Any more thoughts, questions? Yes, hello. Hello. Uh, can you hear me? This is yeah. Ashta. Yes, we can. I okay, can hear you. <laughs> uh, thank you, Agustina, for uh, the presentation. I'm sorry I missed the beginning. But uh, I loved what I, I, I heard, uh, very nice, so thank you very much. Um, I wanted to build a little bit uh, after what uh, Sister Berlin has said also, um, and Jessica earlier. Um, for me, being in uh, social media, there is the social aspect of it. Um, although there is... Uh, you are behind the screen, but you know that people are there reading you. Yeah. So I struggled a little bit, I have to say, at the beginning. And sometimes until now, mm -hmm. uh, with authenticity of the message I want to deliver. I don't know if you 
you talked about this in the beginning because I missed the beginning of your presentation. Um, so uh, we are talking about the message that we want to deliver. And for me, sometimes I had to, I mean, I, I'm saying that it's a little, it's a pity that we have in social media, the system of flags and mm -hmm. countings and numbers that uh, this post is more popular than the other because uh, basically uh, if, if we are honest, social media is to allow people to, to say what they think. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we are in a perfect world, whatever anyone needs to say is as valuable as another one. And uh, for me, from what I see currently, even in social media, the, the, the most popular post i don't even understand <laughs> why they are so popular you will you will you will see someone um that will say i i went to buy bread and you will likes and someone who will talk about i don't know something important for me for example women's right and you will have two likes so for me i definitely don't understand what is important and and, and this aspect of uh, numbering things, at some point, uh, I, I mean, we are all human. I, we want people to like us. <laughs> so uh, you would like every post that you will post to be, to, to be popular. So I think, I don't know, something that really I noticed in the beginning is first find your own voice, what message you want to, to, to deliver and just forget about numbers and who likes and uh, if really because I, in the beginning i when i started my major i struggled when you post something and you have zero like and you will be like oh my god <laughs> maybe i'm i'm I, i'm totally <laughs> like there um, um inappropriate you know you will feel really like nobody not even one like so, um, yeah, I, I had to learn myself to just, okay, I need to say that now. I have, I have a tool. I need to, although I control myself a lot, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I'm reading what Sister Berlin is saying. Yeah, we have to forget about numbers. And um, I'm still, I have to say, working on my own voice that uh, forget about the social aspect of it. And this is what we, we live actually in our lives. Uh, when you want to say something, we, we, we want to please people. We don't want to hurt the feeling of these people because when you say this, you know that this one, they would not like it. Yeah. And uh, I feel that it's the same thing that we come and uh, we encounter on social media. So find your own voice and just say it the way you think it. And the last thing also for me is that I have so many things in my head uh -huh. and sometimes I don't know how to put it in writing. So sometimes I will read the post. I have to say Sister Verlaine that most of the time she'll write something I will say, yes, yes, this is what I was thinking, same thing. <laughs> but I mean, sometimes also we don't know how to formulate it. So to be patient with yourself and learn how you will express yourself. And uh, yeah, I will, I, will, I will stop here. Thank you so much. Anyways, I enjoyed the presentation. Thank you so much, Sister Acha. Thank you so, so, so much. And I definitely agree with you on the numbers one. It's something that I've also had to work, work through because sometimes I will post something and I wouldn't get that much engagement, but also, recognizing as you said that finding your own voice is very very much important to be able to do what is it that you want to do on social media and also like creating your own niche so definitely thank you very much sister Acha anybody else hello can yes, you hear me yes aha uh -huh. hi this is Sevashri from India hi everyone uh, hi, Berlin. Uh, so I think, uh, can I talk for two minutes? Yes, yes please go ahead. Okay, all right. 
okay so i have been uh, listening to this and i'm glad you know you you have organized such a such a topic to discuss and i think you know uh, very rightly you know someone was speaking about like you put so much of efforts you know and you don't get so many likes you know it could be discouraging sometime but what i feel and i completely agree here with berlin that you should always speak out and there could be no other better medium than social media i mean um, berlin knows about it you know i have been speaking so much about gender diversity in the last 3 years you know on twitter and uh, in the beginning yes it was actually demotivating because because you think a lot you create some content and then you know you do not get the kind of response you you are looking forward to so it could be discouraging at times but then slowly slowly you know you see that you know you get response but it takes time it takes time and uh, then you build your own followers you build your own network and you know if not anything you are noticed for your messages you are noticed for your messages and over a period of time then people understand that what you are like you know fighting for what are like you know why are you raising your voice for you know if not anything you you know generally like develop a good network and uh, this is the reason why i know berlin today i mean i i i, I am in new delhi valen is in new york but you know we are connected i think you know through through twitter only and you know i was so glad that you know she came uh, to to a webinar that we had organized yesterday uh, to talk about youth for the future yesterday mm-hmm. i think that was only possible because you know because of the social media and yeah. i think you know more than anything i think women should work on developing their network and social media is the perfect platform for that i i i just hope everybody agrees on this you know definitely definitely and please what is your name again hello hello yeah what is your name miss hello i can yes Okay, well. Good morning. So uh, this is Krista. Um, I actually joined um, a little bit late, so I didn't <laughs> get to hear the conversation. But um, I have been. I'm sure it was good, Agustina. Um, <laughs> okay. I'm just going to be like listening to the comments. And um, the one thing that I just you know uh, that I can think of right now is the maybe you no, know, it, it might be like a different topic. Um, the mental health, right? um aspect of social media right um that we're not talking about often right uh, i feel you know the conversations about the likes not having likes not having you know folks respond back you know engage while you comment you know stuff i think that it should be a conversation about you know like the self esteem you know that our young girls you know or, or the low self esteem that they you know that they're dealing with right when they mm-hmm. decide to engage on social media and then they don't have those likes right how does that affect you know their you know their behavior Does that affect the interactions you know, with other people? Because we live in a world where everything's on social media, right? If it is, if you know, if it if it's not on social media, then it never happens, right? And so, not only talking about the mental health aspect of it and the toll that it has on each and every one of us, you know, uh, but then you know, also talking about the other aspect, which is you no know, cyberbullying, right? So how do we reconcile uh, those two, and how do we you know just open up the space to have this very difficult conversation about you know, how, like how do you feel when you you know post something on social media and everyone know and know what response you know or if you only have i don't know 100 followers you know i personally you know i think this is like work that i've done a lot i think for myself over the years to not really you know i don't really care I, this is just me right mm-hmm. i especially like post things it's good if you get you know you know engagement if it doesn't i'm fine because that's you know, like i, I post things because i have you no know, thought that is running through my head and i just want to put it out because, like once i get it then i like i liberate myself um and so that's why you know i sort of like turn my mind not to worry about the life and all that stuff but you know like how about you know like other folks you know who are still dealing with that right you know and just yeah. i think it's such like a good conversation 
you know, that, that we need to have. Thank you. Thank you very much, Christelle. That was mm -hmm. such a great point on mental health. And also going back mm -hmm. to what my sister Seva mm -hmm. mentioned earlier about like, you know, when you see the numbers not picking up, it's like, you know, you get discouraged and it's something that takes time to build. And going on what Christelle said about mental health, it's definitely something that affects a lot of people, even I myself, because you, you can post something that you think is very, very meaningful, but it doesn't get a lot of traffic and you're like, oh, you know, what's going on? But it's something that I've had to like learn to deal and tune it out because you can't please everybody, unfortunately. And it's not everything that you put out there that people will like, but as long as it's out there, it will get picked up eventually. And it does take time to build your following. So definitely, thank you very much, Christelle, on the mental health one. Anybody else has any, any other inputs, thoughts, something we can learn from? Hi, everyone. Hello. Yes, this is Chikas Kuble from Nigeria. I sincerely apologize for joining this very late. I was on a uh, different webinar, but coming in here, I heard what my big sister Valine said and all the other comments that followed. And for me, I, I would always say that because women were raised with so many rules, um, so many in rules, you don't do this, don't do that, don't say this, don't dress this way, you shouldn't mm -hmm. be seen this or that. So for me personally, uh, politics yeah. has taught me to have a thick skin. Mm -hmm. And that's not to say that I'm rude, but I've just developed this skin that, okay, if I have something to say, I go ahead and say it. If you don't like it, that is your business. Mm -hmm. And I always tell young women that this world that you have in your head that seeks to have you become so perfect doesn't exist. So quit uh, from trying to live your life and please people. And that's not to say that you should uh, misbehave, but to say that in order to break the rules mm -hmm. and in order to make good trouble, like John Lewis says, mm -hmm. you have to believe in yourself and in believing in yourself, you must be confident because in our current uh, world, if you're not bold, if you're not confident, you can't even pursue your dreams. Oh, yeah. And it's important for us as women to know that yes, the social media will be there to heavily criticize you more than the men are criticized because whether it's social media or in real life, that is what it is. So you must be able to differentiate that imaginary world you have and then uh, fix it with the reality. So women must uh, face this world boldly and quit from trying to obey all the rules. Break the rules, be yourself, dream big and always express yourself. And that brings me to my final point. All of these issues are geared towards silencing women. So whether it's on social media or in real life, we need to have a way to always encourage women to speak their truth and speak it boldly. Thank you. Oh, thank you very, very much, Sister Kumle. Thank you, thank you so, so much. That was so powerful. Very, very powerful, thank you. And I definitely do agree with you that we need to stop, you know, it's important as, Zahara's dream hashtag said, be you powerfully stand in your own truth and not everybody will like what you have to say or what you're doing. But as long as you're confident, you know where you're going, you stand for what you believe in, you can achieve anything you put your hands on. So thank you very much, Sister Kumle. And any last thoughts before we wrap up? No. Oh, and I definitely do agree with you, Verlaine. We need to have like a separate discussion on this one for everybody, for everybody else. That was very, very interesting to take a look at the mental health. Okay. Well, let's all give a virtual hand <laughs> to Augustina for her wonderful presentation this morning. Um, 
I think I think everyone, I, there are many dream team members here and I think they're all just so proud uh, to see all the growth. Uh, <laughs> so, and she will continue to see Augustina in action and I'm sure everyone will uh, look forward to seeing what you come up with, whether through Canva <laughs> or something else. Uh, but thank you so much for, for sharing your wisdom and your time um, and always being powerfully you. So until next time, everybody, thank you for joining. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.